What's up everyone? Today we have a very unique video for you. This is essentially three different video concepts that will be presented as one, so we hope you enjoy it. We will talk about the mind-blowing similarities between Breath of the Wild and Majora's Mask, a small theory of the Happy Mask salesman that many haven't noticed in Breath of the Wild, and how Nintendo should approach their next big Zelda game. We may eventually split these three videos up into their own videos, but for now, since these three concepts are closely related, we thought it would be interesting to present them as one. If you're a fan of these types of videos, please subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and let us know your thoughts on everything in the comments down below. Breath of the Wild, without a doubt, has references and connections to literally every Zelda game. We have Hyrule Castle from Twilight Princess, the Temple of Time looks like it was pulled directly out of Ocarina of Time, we even have the Twin Peaks from the original game's artwork. But while I play the game, the strongest connection I've seen is to Majora's Mask. Nintendo themselves even posted a video and several pictures of connections Breath of the Wild has with the original NES title. But I feel it may unintentionally have an even stronger connection to Majora's Mask. The main boss and main area of the game is located in the very center of the map. In Majora's Mask's case, we have Clocktown in the center of Termina and Majora as the boss. In the case of Breath of the Wild, we have Hyrule Castle at the center of Hyrule with Ganon as the boss. You can go directly to the main boss in both cases, and in both games you get an alternative ending than if you would have actually played and beat the entire game. Though, in Majora's Mask you won't actually be able to kill the boss or even see him, but in a way, you can still confront Majora and you are met with an alternative ending, which is the moon crashing and destroying Termina. An even bigger connection, Majora's Mask and Breath of the Wild have four main dungeons with four main bosses. Each dungeon is located in a specific area on different sides of the map. Both games have a main story that can be rushed through and finished without even really understanding the world. However, the real story is told by talking to all the different NPCs and doing side quests. Depending on what time of day it is, certain NPCs will be in different areas and different side quests will be available. Each area has its hero or important character that has died due to the evil in the world. You gain a special ability from them, whether it's a mask that turns you into a Deku and allows you to pop up high in the air and glide to your destination, or an ability from the Rito that does the same exact thing. The most obscure connection that a lot of people miss out on is the traveling Happy Mask salesman. Both games have one. Majora's Mask has the familiar one that has become a fan favorite character due to the mystery that surrounds him and the mask that he has you return to him. In Breath of the Wild, we don't have THE traveling Happy Mask Salesman, but we do have A traveling Happy Mask Salesman. While he does sell items other than masks, he does have a wide variety of masks that all have their own unique ability. Usually, it's a pretty simple disguise that allows certain enemies to believe you're just one of them. You can find him at night, and he has a high interest in the monsters and dark forces of the world which matches perfect with Majora's Mask's Happy Mask Salesman and his unhealthy obsession with what is probably the darkest and most powerful monster of all, Majora. During Majora's Mask 3D's release, Nintendo had an interview held by the Happy Mask Salesman where he said that he could return in a future Zelda game. Many thought he would have some sort of cameo or reference in Breath of the Wild. As it turns out, a different Happy Mask Salesman ended up in the game. However, you could make the debate that he is the real mask salesman and is just wearing his own mask to take the identity of the one that we see. We are told he has a strange obsession with monsters by some of the NPCs in Hyrule. So what if he actually got too close for his own good and was killed or fatally wounded and the real happy mask salesman used the song of healing on him? I'll be honest, the end part here is a bit out there and too ridiculous to be true, but I thought it was still an interesting theory so I included it in here. With that said, Breath of the Wild's connections to Majora's Mask can't be overlooked. From each game having four giants or four guardians that you need to rescue in order to stop the main boss, the final battle and one of the main areas being located at the very center of the map, 
each of the four main dungeons being located on their own side of the map and having their own unique race in that area, gaining new abilities by rescuing or saving the spirit of an important NPC, a huge importance being placed on helping other NPCs, the main story of the game coming from side quests as opposed to following the main game, the Happy Mask Salesman's reference, and much more. As close as Breath of the Wild comes to being a Majora's Mask spiritual successor, but on a much larger scale, I would really like the next big Zelda title to be a true return to Termina. In most Zelda games, we get to see how Hyrule has changed from game to game, and even in different timelines. Take Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess for an example. We get to see how the world of Hyrule has changed in the hundred or so years between games. Not only that, but we also get to see it on a much larger scale. With Breath of the Wild, we get to see how it looks over 10,000 years later, and again on a much, much larger scale. I would personally love to revisit Termina and see how it has changed in the hundreds or thousands of years since Majora's Mask, and on a much larger scale. With Breath of the Wild's map being dozens of times larger than Ocarina of Time's version of Hyrule, what would Termina look like if it was expanded upon dozens of times larger than our first introduction to the land doomed to fail and so many years later? I would love to see what Clock Town, Stone Tower Temple, and other iconic locations look like when it isn't being limited by the hardware of the Nintendo 64. How has the world changed in the thousands of years between Majora's Mask and this new game? Similar to how Ocarina of Time's Hyrule changed between Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and now Breath of the Wild. Does Termina now speak of the Legend of Link? A mysterious kid in green with his own fairy that just mysteriously showed up once and in a span of three days, solved everyone's problem and even stopped the moon from falling, saving the entire world. Is he looked at and held in the same high regard just as he was in Hyrule? Will NPCs compare this new Link, hopefully the Link from Breath of the Wild, to the Hero of Time? What new dangers have come to Termina? Could we get even more of a backstory on Fierce Deity or Majora? An interesting thing to note here is that Majora's Mask was made so quickly because of a deal made between Aonuma and Miyamoto. Miyamoto wanted to begin work on a Zelda game for the GameCube, which eventually turned into Wind Waker, but Aonuma convinced Miyamoto to let him work on a new game for the Nintendo 64. Miyamoto agreed if it could be completed in a year, they could do it. So Majora's Mask reused the same engine and character models from Ocarina of Time. With the experience they already had in creating a large open world and dungeon with the engine of Ocarina of Time on Nintendo 64, the team already knew where to begin and likely had tons of ideals left over that were taken out of Ocarina of Time. So the plans of the game in some ways was already laid out before pre-production of Majora's Mask even officially began. Like the Nintendo 64, the GameCube also had two different traditional Zelda games that shared the same engine. Except with the GameCube, they took what they learned from the Wind Waker and went in a completely opposite direction. And although it is the same engine, it was an advanced version of the engine and the art style was changed completely from looking cartoony to realistic and didn't reuse character models like Majora's Mask did, which, in the end, is why it took much longer to come out. For those wondering, yes, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess do use the same exact engine even though they look completely different. Think of it like Unreal Engine, which is used in many different games, from realistic open world titles such as the Batman Arkham series to linear cartoon games like Dinosaur Run. While it would be interesting for Nintendo to take the Twilight Princess approach and spend another five years or longer to create a more advanced engine for a new Zelda game, it would be nice if they took the Majora's Mask approach and reused the same engine with minor improvements and gave us a new Zelda game that would be Breath of the Wild's version of Majora's Mask. Reuse the same engine, art style, character models, and everything else. Allow us to return to Termina or even a brand new world and pump out a new game within just two or three years. Some of you may be thinking if they rush the game, it will end up being released before it's ready and end up sucking. But for example, if Ubisoft can put out a new Assassin's Creed game and other developers can release fast sequels to their own games almost every single year that has a brand new world each time, 
new characters, and a new storyline, then I think Nintendo could easily spend two to three years, possibly an even shorter amount of time, and give us another great Zelda game. Remember, Majora's Mask was said to be in development for only a year, and was released two years after Ocarina of Time. Which, for the record, even today, Ocarina of Time is looked at as one of the most groundbreaking games to ever exist. It received more perfect scores and more pre-orders than any other game at that time. So, for Nintendo to follow up such a masterpiece with a game that only took two years to release, literally the entire point of Majora's Mask was that Nintendo would rush development so they could finish it in time. Today, we're used to delay after delay for a Zelda game. So a rushed Zelda game coming out today probably wouldn't happen. But Nintendo did rush Majora's Mask. And again, it was a follow-up to Ocarina of Time. So a lot of people and diehard fans thought that there was no way Majora's Mask would be able to live up to the expectations of a real Ocarina of Time sequel. But many Zelda fans still consider it to be one of the best Zelda games due to how unique it feels even though it reuses almost everything from Ocarina of Time. Nintendo are in the same position today. Breath of the Wild has released with almost perfect scores and many fans, developers, and publishers look at it as another revolution for the gaming industry. So should Nintendo take the Majora's Mask approach and reuse the same engine with minor improvements and give us a quick follow up in just a couple of years? Or should they take their time as they have been doing and make us wait another 5, 6, or possibly even 7 years to get the next big Zelda game. I want to thank you all for watching this video and welcome to the end slate. If you're a fan of these videos, you can follow me on Twitter for updates on future videos at Game Over Jesse. Please subscribe, like, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you would like to watch even more of my videos, click the video to the left or let me know what types of videos you would like to see in the future. I would like to take the rest of this time to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you're a fan of of this channel and would also like to help us out by becoming a Patreon supporter and get some awesome rewards for yourself, like being a part of my videos, shoutouts, custom avatars, giveaways, being added to our private Discord to chat during live streams, and more, please visit patreon.com slash gameoverjesse. We're even smaller supporters at the $1 level, we'll get you some awesome stuff. Finally, a huge thank you to this month's supporters. George says hi, Link uses the Triforce, Transcendent Sacred Courage, Glenn Cassio, Prey Warrior, Lunarium, Chris Gasparin, Harris Priest, Lovable Christie, Key of Time 15, Jerome Measure, Daryl Quinnen, Furzen 16, Cadron, Magic Tech Review, and The Itch Network. <laughs>